Welcome to Community Foundation Spotlight on PAC-14. I'm Spicer Bell, I'm the President of the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore. And through this series of programs, we shine the spotlight on organizations that are really making a difference in our community. And uh, my guest today is Bill Wilson with the Pemberton Hall Foundation. Bill, great to have you with us. Thank you very much. Pemberton Hall Foundation. We were talking before we started mm -hmm. recording it. Pember Pemberton Hall is certainly one of my favorite uh, spots around here. Mm -hmm. But for those who haven't visited Pem Pemberton Hall, Let's start off with what is Pemberton Hall? Well, Pemberton Hall is an 18th century house, 1741. It's one of the oldest houses in the area, but more importantly than that, uh, the land around it's preserved along with it. Um, it was, it's a gamble-roofed brick, uh, early Georgian house with some medieval characteristics to it. Uh, it was built by a member of the Handy family. Uh, he was raised in Bermuda by his um, older brother, but his father had come into Somerset County, you know, Wicomico, Somerset, and Worcester were all one mm -hmm. county at that point, right. in the 1670s as an indentured servant. So his father rose in prominence, uh, was known to his ships. Uh, he and his wife uh, had 15 children, and Isaac's number 13 out of that. So he was raised by his older brother in Bermuda and trained as a mariner aboard his father's ship. And so he reaches Ms. Jardy, and he comes back here, and he marries into the DeShield family. And I always say to the people that I take through the house, if you don't have money in the 18th century, how do you get it? Uh, you do it one of two things, through land, or you marry well, marry and he well. did both. <laughs> Good for him. So uh, he rose in prominence in the community. He's one of the founders of Salisbury, for example. He had joined, uh, he joined two of his brothers um, along the Wicomico River. Uh, one owned the what is now Upper Ferry at that point. Uh, the other brother had a plantation that he inherited uh, north of town, where, uh, about where um, uh, Old Navy is. Um, and so uh, he rose to prominence. He wanted to build a house that was commensurate with that. He'd been living out there in a very small house that was 16 by 20, which was standard for the time period. And so he built Pemberton Hall, which was a major undertaking for the time period. And we've managed to restore it to its 18th century appearance uh, over uh, many years um, because it had become derelict. Now, you told me you've been involved with this project yourself for, you said, over 30 years? A few years, uh, <laughs> since 1974 is when I got involved, so about 36 years. And um, uh, so I've seen a little bit it come along, I think, from and, the very and beginning. You, you said at, at one point it, the, the, the farmers, there was a farm right up to within a few feet of the house. Exactly. And, and the house was about to be bulldozed. Yes, and it had been used as a tenant house for probably 50 years, and then it had been abandoned. And the owners at that point um, had bought the property for farming purposes. There were watermelon fields within 10 feet of the house. Mm. And uh, it was being used for storage. Um, it was a shambles inside. The brick uh, wing, uh, the kitchen wing, had collapsed mm -hmm. uh, and they just basically were going to bulldoze it into the cellar hole because it was in the way. And a group of people uh, got together uh, and formed the Pemberton Hall Foundation to save it. Uh, and they basically, that's, everything goes from there. It saved the house. It saved the house. And, and, and everything has kind of grown out from there, which is, is, is a fascinating history to me. And, I, and I, I really want to credit the owners of the property because they didn't want it, but they saw to it that the house and two acres were deeded to the Pemberton Foundation. And in 1976, uh, we convinced the county to purchase using bicentennial funds from the federal government 64 acres. Um, we owned, uh, at the, well, we owned two acres, so uh, about 66, I guess, at that point, were to be on a park. And by 1987, we had finished developing that first phase, and we were faced with a developer from North Carolina that had bought up an option on three sides um, and was going to put 150 houses, including uh, 10 out on the island. There's a 32-acre island out there. There were going to be houses out on, on the island where the trails are now. Yes. And oh, wow. uh, unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. And the closest house was going to be probably within 30 feet of Pemberton Hall. Hmm. 
And so we were, we were faced with a dilemma. They went for annexation to the city. That's the only way we found out about it. We defeated annexation, uh, basically, and we went to uh, the state. When the county had a little bit of money at that point, um, and went to the state, and uh, Donald Schaefer at that point uh, saw to it that we got six hundred thousand dollars set aside. The county put up two hundred thousand, and we bought the option on the property. So we came within a, a few days, literally, of losing the whole thing. Uh, would have been sitting in the middle of the housing development. Uh, the end result of it was uh, we now have, as part of the park, mm -hmm. you know, there are three of the original boundaries as of 1750 for the plantation intact, cut off by Pemberton Drive, that's all. So that's where we are. Now we've done, when you don't have a lot of money, you do an awful lot of research. Sure. And, well, now, uh, so, so the, the, the entire project now is over 200 acres. Uh, the, the entire park, park is uh, 262 acres. 262 acres of, of, of historical park. It is a historical park. Which yes. really is, uh, it, it, it's unique in that respect here in mm -hmm. the area. Uh, you know, whoever was involved with all the development that's occurring on the west side to have 260 acres set aside for that type of purpose is... Well, you know, I think the, really the county remarkable. was very foresighted because they literally set that aside right on the cusp of that massive development that's going on. And so it's safe for perpetuity out there. Uh, now, the Pemberton Foundation owns the house and two acres, mm -hmm. and we are totally responsible. We don't receive any funds from the county for, for the restoration uh, of the, of the uh, house and, and surrounding mm -hmm. land. Uh, so we have to raise every dime. Uh, for that, and um, over a period of years, is very slow going, obviously. But actually, that's been a good thing, because we've been able to do things the right way. Um, we've been able to, instead of having to do it in a big hurry and make mistakes, been able to do it very accurately with the latest research, and uh, we've been able to do voluminous research mm -hmm. on that plantation, as you heard me say a few minutes ago. So everything is research-based. Yeah. Take us back a little bit, if you could. Mm -hmm. it, it, it built in 1742. 1741. 41, mm -hmm. certainly one of the oldest, uh, I guess, still standing mm -hmm. uh, houses around here. It was a true plantation back then. Yes. What would, what would that plantation have been like? What would that property have been well, like? Well, he owned about 1,000 acres. Uh, now, you keep in mind, there were only about when he built that. Well, actually, when he... When he uh, 1740. Uh, there were only about 250,000 people in the whole of the Chesapeake mm -hmm. at that point. That's Virginia and Maryland. And so he's coming into a raw area and, and um, the first thing he does, he buys that piece of property. We know the chain of title going back into the 17th century. Uh, and he builds a house that's uh, um, 16 foot. Now that's 16 by 20 mm -hmm. uh, with a 10 foot kitchen. Now he and his wife have nine children, and uh, th uh, two others were born, uh, three others were born after he moved into Pemberton Hall. Uh, he's basically, his wife gave birth every two years. Yeah. And that's you said he was the 13th of 15. He's 13th of 15. And he has 11, 11 children. children. <laughs> and uh, he and his wife have 11 children, yeah. I better put that that way. Uh, that plantation, he was growing uh, primarily grains. They had switched to a grain economy very early uh, in, in the Wicomico hundred, uh, but some tobacco was being, gr being grown. They're shipping lumber out of it uh, as well. He has a wharf. Because yeah, they would have um, shipped right there on exactly. the river. Uh, that wharf, by the way, is intact. It's underwater. It's anaerobic. Uh, it's a bulkhead wharf. It's 200 feet long. The timbers are 24 inches square stacked on top of each other, and in, through uh, dendrochronology, through tree ring dating, and uh, records, uh, we know that that wharf was laid down in the uh, spring of 1747. Now, where is it in proximity to the house? Uh, if you're looking uh, from the back door of Pemberton Hall, with the front door actually mm -hmm. facing the river, it's to the right. Mm -hmm. And that is also part of the uh, park. Uh, it was called Mulberry Landing. It is the oldest documented wharf of its kind in the United States. Bar really? And, and, and many of those timbers are still there The timbers underwater. are still there. The top timber is obviously rotted off, but anything that's below water is anaerobic. Mm -hmm. No air gets to it. It doesn't rot. In fact, in some places, it looks like a brand new piece of pine. Mm -hmm. 
Amazing. And um, so underwater archaeology, the state underwater archaeologists did the work with us. And um, that can be, that will be left uh, the way it is. Um, it, it's interpreted. We would obviously like to be able to do more with it. Uh, his ships would have lain off, it, he owned it three, three ships at one point, or interest in three ships, in the channel out in the Wicomico. Mm -hmm. And they would have used lighters to carry a hogsheads of goods out to those ships uh, to load them, uh, timber, spars, and so forth. So he's, he is a very prosperous uh, plantation owner, member of the Provincial Assembly. Um, he's a colonel in the militia. Uh, he's a justice of the peace, which was kind of like a sitting councilman and um, judge. I guess that's a combination of things. And probably between court sessions was holding people over for surety bond at the house. So his house was very important to him to be able to show off that he had arrived, and that's what he built. He did pretty well for himself having started as an indentured servant. I'd well, say. his father was an indentured Indent servant, father, okay. but yes, uh, being a low man pole with older brothers and so forth, yes, he rose in society to become mm -hmm. fairly prominent. There's a lot of things he was involved with in mm -hmm. Somerset County. Okay. Now, uh, it, it, we, I'm not sure, we might have some folks watching who mm -hmm. don't know where Pemberton Hall is. Uh, Pemberton located? Drive. Uh, in Salisbury. I won't give you the 911 address because that wouldn't do you any good. But uh, Pemberton is three miles out on Pemberton Drive on the left hand side on Wicomco River mm -hmm. uh, on Plantation Lane, which is uh, the entrance to Pemberton Historical Park. And oh, by the way, when you drive in that road to Pemberton, uh, you're driving on the original, the site of the original rolling road to the wharf. Really? And Crooked Oak Lane uh, is, which is still intact was the rolling road to the plantation wharf from the upper end of the plantation. It's been there since the 1740s. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and so we're very fortunate, however, <clears throat> this is unlike anything else that you're going to see in the state of Maryland as far as being intact plantation. There is nothing to match mm -hmm. it. I, it, it describes some of the, uh, uh, the other features of the park there. Uh, it, well, the park itself has five miles of nature trail nature. system. Uh, we basically work with the Recreation and Parks Department. Uh, we've provided, for example, all the research that goes into the, into the park, uh, the rebuilding of, of many of the uh, structures out there. Uh, we've provided the, the uh, expertise to be able to do that uh, that are on the park mm -hmm. property. Um, uh, the barns that are out there, for example, the one that is what we call a contact building, uh, is uh, based on the size of Isaac Handy's uh, barn, 1798 tax inventory, we know what size it was, and the two flanking sheds that were attached to it. So interior, it's modern classroom space mm -hmm. and bathroom facilities and offices. Now the five mile nature trail system that's out there goes through every habitat present on the eastern shore except a salt marsh. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, you can walk around on the island, there are wards, there are piers rather that go out into to the, to the uh, river, for example. And, um, and each one of those is timed so that you would be able to walk them at your leisure if you only have 15 minutes as a trail mm -hmm. that would be able to mm -hmm. do that in. And we work together, uh, the whole point behind that is a passive park. So you don't see pavilions out there, for example, mm -hmm. uh, as you will at a lot of the other parks, um, because it's intended to be a passive park where you can go to get in touch with your uh, with yourself walking the trails uh, solitarily or with a family. Mm -hmm. um, it is, um, it's being developed um, probably not as fast as what we would like to be able to do to put back exactly what the core of the plantation was. Mm -hmm. We've put back all the, ap the apple orchards, the sites of the apple orchards are there, albeit they were about three now times. A few years ago you did a lot of split rail fencing out yes. there. Yes, and those are back, you're going to see um, a plat, but um, uh, we have a plat from 186 that shows us where all the fence lines were. Mm -hmm. And we have a document that tells us how many rails were in them. Really? So, uh, all now, was, they was that a volunteer a, project when you did it? Uh, yes, that, and we do a lot of work with volunteers. Um, in fact, the Pemberton Foundation is all volunteer. Mm -hmm. We have no paid staff, and um, we, we try to do 
uh, things as quickly as we possibly can, but to do them right, mm -hmm. which is more important. And to give you an example, uh, you asked about volunteers. Right now we have a Boy Scout doing his Eagle Project. We do several of those with the foundation, uh, doing benches mm -hmm. for us we're, we're, that we're going to use for school kids. And we do about, uh, well, last year we did 700 students with hands-on programs, not just tours to the house with uh, seen and not heard, mm -hmm. um, programs with school students. And we offer 15 different uh, curricula um, so that uh, projects, or excuse me, uh, 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 projects that teacher can pick from mm -hmm. to be able to do that fit within the state mandates. And uh, usually it's third and fourth grade, which is where colonial history mm -hmm. is inter introduced. But we, we work with other students, and we work from students from outside the county as well. Okay, great. Let me pause you for a moment there. Bill, you're watching Community Foundation Spotlight uh, here on PAC-14. And uh, through this series of programs, we shine the spotlight on nonprofit organizations that are really making a difference in our community. My guest today is Bill Wilson. Uh, and Bill is uh, with the, Hamber the Pemberton Hall Foundation. And we're learning, learning more about Pemberton Hall Foundation and uh, Pemberton uh, Historical Park. Uh, now, uh, now, Bill, I understand you've been known to appear out there in colonial costume. Yes, I do. <laughs> in fact, I enjoy working with kids that way. And we do it, so, and it, we do it as accurately as we can. They're, these are not, um, you know, obviously original clothing. Mm -hmm. But all of us that are out there that are the interpreters um, do it that way. And I'm out there working quite often in my 18th century clothing, uh, working with students, working with the public. When we take uh, tours through, we bus tours. We have a number of those that are coming up. Um, we're in 18th century garb to be able to do it because it adds to the uh, meaning of the house. Mm -hmm. The interpretation that we do within the house is all based on well, for example, uh, five inventories that we have for the plantation starting in 1762 at Isaac's death. So we know specifically what was there. Um, we're not doing it as a decorative arts house. It's not a behind the ropes museum. Uh, we want people to be involved and ask questions. And so we do with a combination of, of uh, reproductions and original pieces. Uh, but it's all based on the furnishings, which are all, mm -hmm. are all based on the inventory. And we're looking for donations all the time. For example, we, we received a phone call about, uh, about a month ago. So uh, a gentleman had uh, about a 1750 black walnut cradle that he wanted a home for, that had been in his family, and he wanted, it, wanted to donate it. Um, and he'd contacted the uh, antique dealer here in town, and she suggested Pemberton Hall. So we're looking for things that are appropriate within that inventory. And what, that what a wonderful is. home for that cradle. It is, and, and it, it will really stay there. Is. And it fits yeah. within our inventory. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, we received some things that we're not able to uh, give a home to because we are strictly within the 18th century. And uh, we accept them uh, with the idea that we'll um, either use the funds that generate it from it or we'll give them to a home where it can be used, mm -hmm. like the Historical Society we work closely with, for example. Uh, Poplar Hill Mansion, which is 19th century, mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, and others. And so we, we try to do those kinds of things and be responsible. We do have a furnishings policy. It's not just, uh, oh, well, that would look nice in there. Mm -hmm. We have a very specific policy that we follow. Good. Uh, just for a moment, clear up for our viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, there's the Pemberton Hall is the building. Mm -hmm. There's Pemberton Hall Foundation, which is your organization. There's Pemberton Historical Park, which is county. Which is county. Mm -hmm. Just kind of you know walk us through that relationship one well, more time. Well, we are partners within the park. And, you know, we work together very closely on the things that we do. We sponsor different programs together, for example. Uh, but our funds are separated. Uh, Pemberton Foundation, for example, Pemberton Hall Foundation, has its own board of directors. Uh, we have a nine-member board of directors and always have had. Uh, so we're active in our own, uh, on our own as well. We sponsor things outside of the county mm -hmm. as well. 
uh, we've done bus tours, for example, and the latest one this was this past spring. Um, and we do our own tours and we receive, uh, we have a charge, for example, a minimal charge for, for programs mm -hmm. and for touring the, the house, uh, $4. We've gone up just recently from $2. <laughs> okay, we try to keep it as inexpensive it's still a bargain. as we can. And uh, so we, we have to raise our own funds to be able to maintain and restore that house. There are no county or public funds that go into it at all. Um, we do not have a state easement, for example, on the house, um, and and um, we do have uh, we have received uh, bond bill funds. Um, if that is um, if we do that kind of thing, we are working within state mandates as to what has to be done, and there has been no criticism at all about how that mm -hmm. has been achieved. We try to do it as accurately as we possibly can. And we actually exceed some of the state standards. Mm -hmm. and, and there, of course, are a number of events out there during the year, mm -hmm. wine festival, I understand a beer festival, uh, you bike yes. tour, things like that. And, and you are a partner, your organization a partner. A partner. In uh, the uh, Waikamaku um, County Tourism Department um, leases our land, the two acres that we have, for the wine festival and for an upcoming beer festival that's mm -hmm. going to be held. Uh, out there, uh, this past this coming weekend, we can refer to that as this mm -hmm. date. But there is a bike tour uh, that's being held, West Wycombe Heritage Tour, mm -hmm. which I think this is the 14th year, and we work very closely with them. And those will be open for. It's going through house. several different name changes, but always yes. the same weekend. It's <laughs> always the same weekend, and that's sp that's sponsored by the county, and those proceeds mm -hmm. uh, go towards the park. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're doing joint fundraising, but we're all and working together. But we're also doing our own separate things in some ways. It, it, it's an example of a great partnership. It really. Well, it is. is. Yeah. We we've provided all the research and and uh, design for, for the park, for example. Um, and so uh, we provide the expertise for for those kinds of things. Our research, by the way, is based on is archaeological. We've done. Um, eight major archaeological investigations out there. Yeah. Um, we've done, uh, for example, the new milk house that's just been constructed. Uh, is based on archaeology, architectural research, and uh, documentary research uh, that we did. So it's not just a matter of, oh, well, that wouldn't be nice. It would be nice, nice to, to have one. <laughs> but we, we, know, yeah. uh, we know architecturally what that building looked like from documents and from precedent and we spent a number of years doing the research for it. Same thing with the interior of the house. It's not just my taste or someone else's. It's mm -hmm. what was there. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do. The well, for example, is the same way. It is based on a timber line well rather than a brick line well hmm. because archaeologically that's what was there. Hmm. So uh, when we're putting back the things rather than it being a uh, colonial revival, we're doing it as accurately as we possibly can, and um, as funds become available. Now, Pemberton Hall Foundation, your organization, mm -hmm. is a purely volunteer organization. Yes. Is there memberships? There is a membership. Uh, in so, fact, we're doing a membership drive right now. Well, let's and, put in a uh, plug for that. If somebody's interested in preserving some of our local history, it's a good well, way to we get would, involved. We would love to have them involved. And I, the name I'm going to give you is Renee Fredrickson, who is our, one of our board members, who's in charge of membership. And she is in the process right now of, um, of doing um, just that. And I'm going to give you an address. Um, okay. Pardon my looking down no, because I have fine. to read this, by the way. And, and our um, friends here at, uh, at PAC-14, I'm sure we'll show it on the screen. It's uh, Pemberton Hall Foundation, 1147 South Salisbury Boulevard, Box 8174, and uh, Salisbury, Maryland, obviously, uh, 21801. And the reason I'm reading that is because we've just uh, basically taken a new box uh, number, and, okay. and that's what we're, what we're doing this on for this purpose. Um, we're also right now putting, about to put out, along with several of the other historical organizations in the county, a uh, Christmas catalog of um, things that we all have uh, available for sale through our gift shops. 
And uh, that Christmas catalog is going to be, for example, um, available uh, the first part of October. Mm -hmm. And okay. um, it is so supporting the, our organization, but others within the county as well. We also have an endowment, obviously, through the Community Foundation, and we would welcome that because it has been, it's grown tremendously. And I want to thank you mm, well. for the Community Foundation for that because without that, we would be, not be able to do some of the things that, that we've been able mm -hmm. to do. The Milk House, for example, is a direct result of that. Uh, out there because of the uh, funding that we received we had to match. Mm -hmm. Well that's that's our pleasure. We're glad to, you know, historic preservation, preserving our local history and culture is just one of the various areas that we try to work with and uh, it's, we're great to have partners. To it is it is like paid you. off for us uh, greatly and, and we very much appreciate it and uh, we would like to build that an endowment uh, for the maintenance of the house mm -hmm. and long after I'm gone and a few of the others who are getting very long in the tooth We'd like to make sure that it's going to be preserved uh, for the next generations, mm -hmm. and that endowment is going to ensure that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, obviously, we would like working capital as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like uh, the public to become involved. As I said, we need interpreters. Uh, and you don't have to know anything. We can train you. Uh, we've done that quite often. Um, it is. We would like to have it open more than just on Sunday mm -hmm. afternoons, which is what we're able to do now. Right now, the the normal open hours are from Sundays, two to four two on, to four two to four but by appointment anytime so if someone uh, were hosting a group tour that were coming mm -hmm. here or uh, even if you had a family group that had an interest they could contact you all and you would be mm -hmm. glad to uh, that happens quite often by the way and we welcome it it's not a, it's not an imposition I'd like to have I'm usually there's two or three of us that usually do the tour I'd like to have a few hours notice sure uh, you know, preferably a day or so, but if, if it can't be worked out that way, if you're just in town for the day, we would welcome it. And um, I, I would uh, suggest that you call uh, our phone number at the house. It will also then forward you to another number. Uh, and that number is 410-742-1741. Uh, okay, great. Bill, our time has really uh, been flying by here. Um, you know, it, we want to remind folks, if they're not familiar mm -hmm. with Pemberton Hall and the Pemberton Historical Park, they really ought to pay a visit. Yes, indeed. It's, it's, a, it's a gem here uh, here in, uh, in Wicomico County. It's worth, uh, worth sharing with your family and friends. Um, if you have w one parting thought to, to leave with our viewers. Well, we would like to, um, Pemberton Hall is probably one of the best kept secrets on the Eastern Shore, and it represents our heritage for the Lower Eastern Shore. Um, this is not Monticello or it's not Mount Vernon, uh, but it is our version of that uh, because this is what the Eastern Shore was like in the 18th century. And we're losing that, uh, we're losing our heritage very quickly, as you know, with, with new development in the, uh, on the Lower Shore. And uh, we want to see that uh, piece of what the Eastern Shore was like uh, left for our children and grandchildren. And if you're curious, go down uh, and take that drive down. Uh, what is the name of the it's route? It's Pemberton Drive. Pemberton Drive. So, uh, you'll see the sign for about three miles. Uh, you'll see the sign for uh, Pemberton Historical Park. You can't miss the house. It's a mm -hmm. brick, gamble-roofed uh, 18th century house. Um, and uh, if you haven't been out there, uh, it is... Um, You'll, when you get out of the car, you'll just uh, breathe a sigh because, it, yeah. in this, particularly in the spring and the fall, it's a wonderful place to Gorgeous be. spot. Well, Bill, we thank you and uh, everyone associated with Pemberton Hall Foundation for the great work you're doing. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at, uh, at Pemberton Hall sometime soon. Thank you. Right. Uh, you've been watching uh, Community Foundation Spotlight. And today we've been shining the spotlight on Pemberton Hall, wonderful historic structure here in uh, uh, Wicomico County and urge you to visit and learn more.